Sun. Expressing something from inside is one thing, but the seed of having Paul's book, so having something that I'm being drawn out to, now that, that's great. It excited me to see what would happen on the page. For the first time in a long time, I didn't know what was going to happen. 40, 50 drawings later, I've got something to show for it. Read it in two days, tears streaming, just completely blown away. And not really since something like Ridley Walker or Ursula Le Caleb Gwynn's Always Coming Home had I felt so completely, utterly immersed in a time and place other than my own. So The Wake is a book set in 1066 and it's really not just one man's resistance against the Normans, it's a whole way of life, the old ways of England. The Normans, after all, are Norse men. And what could be worse if you're an Englishman in 1066 than French Vikings? I found it challenging and kind of upsetting and therefore massively interesting artistically, sort of drawing, not really knowing that the book was in the back of my mind. There were things that I was drawing that I wouldn't normally draw and it drew me into thinking about drawing and about what was available in, in 1066. This is my, yeah, my shadow making basket. Paul described my uh, materials collection as a shadow making basket, a sort of uh, in like his shadow tongue that he calls the way he writes. And for me, the pictures then needed to also reflect that sense of hidden in shadow and ambiguity, really. <laughs> Welcome to the Yodi Unboxing Show. These are my pencil cases, ash tree bark. The quills I use are made from feathers left by my neighbors, the local swans and geese. Mussel shells left by the crows on the lock. So these are the paints I've been using. Lamp black. It's ground malachite, cherry tree bark gum. That's how we got the pigments really finely. I learned how to forge steel. This is kind of uh, a retelling and a rethinking, like Paul's shadow tongue. It's trying to make something that's subversive uh, but real. The thing I loved about reading Paul's language was how much effort I had to put in at the beginning, especially reading out loud, to find a way to see what was happening and to really read it. With the images, I've tried not to be prescriptive. So just using brush marks as loosely as I could allow myself to suggest things rather than depict them. Just the suggestion and let the viewer finish that off using their imagination. It's sort of hiding things in plain sight. When drawings haven't made the cut, it's because they were too finished. They had to have space for the unknown had to let the dark in. Sun.